it would be probably useful for me to, to, to kind of go through this thing because I'm still trying to discover what happened. I, I feel uh, still a little lost and bewildered and I don't quite get it. And, and that's, a, that's a common thing for me in my life is that I, like somebody, like some things, I mean, just politically, like I can't get how people don't see that that politician's a liar. You know what I mean? I don't get it. And so for me, if I was going to write something, the concept of the title would be how I got into Scientology and why I got out. As a little kid, I'm talking about even before I could talk, I can remember being interested in people, really interested in people. And uh, I was pretty shiny and everybody wanted to, you know, pick him up and all this crap and I didn't like that. And, uh, but, and I could see people. I, could, I felt like I could, I understood who somebody was pretty well as a little guy. And, and, and I didn't have any kind of, I might have had some judgment on it, but I didn't have a condemnation like, oh, I just thought, okay, that's dad. Not just daddy, but oh, okay, that's that guy. And that's Uncle Gino. And uh, this is this guy at the party as a three, four-year-old kid looking around. And at a certain point, I think, certainly before first grade, I became very, very interested in who am I. Not just, you know, oh, that's that guy I know, but I, was, I had some kind of a perception about a person. And so I, and as a little kid, I remember, because the way I could get how I perceived the people in front of me, whether it was accurate or not, it, I believed it was true, was kind of by looking into their eyes and, and saying who they are. And so I remember as a little kid looking in the mirror, looking in the mirror, not, and like really not looking at how do I look, looking and trying to say, who am I? And I, I would say, who are you? Who are you? You know, as a five, six-year-old kid, I remember, eight, eight years old was pretty intense. And, uh, and I never got it. And I just thought, well, I guess that's the life condition that, you, you know, it's, it's, it's too hard to, to self-perceive. So this was a question that, that was always, you know, and then I went up and, and as I was growing up and I played the fool and did normal stupid things and drugs and whatever. But uh, it was always something that was in the back of my mind and I was always on a spiritual journey one way or another, you know, either some new age shit, not, never like, not a lot of organized religion by the time I was 14 or something, I'd kind of lost interest in that. You know, but I would read a lot and even to the point where as a 21-year-old kid, I mean, I remember I was into this spiritual teaching of this one guy who was originally teaching in French and I, I, I learned French just so I could read it in the original French. You know, so it was important to me, but it was all based on who am I? And it kind of, I guess, that Greek know thyself type of philosophy. So somehow I got into Scientology, which was... Um, Bodie Elfman uh, was in my acting class, and my acting teacher, who's a big uh, disseminator, Milton Kitsellis, was uh, ranting about some shit, and he was, and it, which was pissing me off because it was wasting class. It was like nobody, ah, you guys are auditioning me or something. He was pissed off, and he wanted more un, unmitigated just adoration, and he wasn't feeling like he was getting it, and. Uh, and in the middle of his tirade, I was sitting there, like, first thinking, who are these fucking people that are not, you know, flowing the correct amount of attention to the master? And then I, then I, and I looked and I said, I wonder if I am. And I said, do I trust Milton? And I said, you know what, I really don't. And that was kind of like a weird thing. I said, well, I don't. And I thought, uh, do, who do I trust? I said, well, at least my parents. No, I don't trust them. <laughs> and I was looking, I didn't trust anybody in the room. And then I had this realization is I don't trust myself. And so in Scientologies, I found my, my ruin. I found my own ruin. And uh, for some reason, because I thought, oh, well, let me try and trust somebody. Let me try and trust Milton, which is what he was yelling and crying about in this whole big speech. And I thought, well, I knew he was a Scientologist. So I said, Bodhi, I said, give me some book on Scientology. 
I was doing a scene with him. And, oh yeah, and he was this nervous little kid at the time. And uh, so he gave me this big fat book called What is Scientology? A lot of pictures. <coughs> and so I took this book <coughs> and I read it. I read it. I think I stayed up mostly of the night and I read the thing. I mean, you know, I don't know if I got it word for it. I didn't clear all my MUs for sure. But I got through the thing and, <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, okay, if that's true, Fuck, I'll, I'll go clear. I'll try that. That sounds fine. So I, call, I gave Bodie the book back the next day. I said, <laughs> take me to that big castle thing. I want to I wanna, I wanna check this shit out. So he's always very excited, you know. He brings me in, and uh, everybody's all excited, and they've greased the path because, you know, I've been on TV and shit. And uh, everybody's really nice. And I, I figured I want to do this pure of thing because I'd done drugs, and I could feel them in my body. And I read the thing, what the pure of's supposed to do. I said, you know, I always... I felt I had felt at that point like I hadn't done drugs for 10, 15 years, and I thought that was one of the biggest mistakes I'd made in my life. And I thought if this can really take that effect away, because I felt that it lost, I had lost some of the shine that I'd had by, you know, I, I mean, I wasn't a drug addict, but I was a drug indulger, and uh, so I go there basically planning on doing the pure of. But they've got to give this tour, and I must have gotten there at 10 in the morning, and I swear to God, I'm starting to go nuts. I've done tests. I'm on the cans with some lady. I'm like, fuck me, can I just buy this course and let's get going, you know? And then they do this, uh, you know, thing, and they, can, they give me uh, my personality test, and I was all on the top of the thing, and they're still telling me that I'm fucked up. And, and I'm like, look, and they want me to do this. Finally, they go through it. I mean, I must have been there eight hours. I'm ready to pull my hair out. And they say... Uh, uh, you should do uh, some little course called Ups and Downs. I said, look, I'll do the course if I can. Can I just do the pure of thing? Yes, yes, yes. And you have to do the TRs and the objectives first. Uh, or with it. What's that? That's this course. that kind of, I said, fine, just let's go. So I buy the course. I say, well, you know, I've been here. It's Now it's like 8.30 at night. And I say, can I start? Cause, and I had to get a little oral surgery. So let me do something. I came here for some Scientology. All I got was all this. Everybody's selling it to me. I never got to do any. Right, because I wanted to try the shit, and uh, and uh, so now it's eight thirty, and I say, okay, uh, you know, they say, well, you can start your TRs course. You'll do the TRs, you do the the, um, and the TRs are these communication drills. Then you do the pure where you clear all the drugs out, and then you do the auditing, which is called objectives, which is like this stuff where you walk across the room and touch the wall and all this kind of shit. And supposed to, the, the end phenomenon is firmly rooted in present time. I said, that doesn't sound bad. I'll do it. Okay, if you can deliver that. Cool. So, uh, so I said, well, give me some Scientology, for Christ's sakes. I've been here since, what, nine hours or something, getting nothing. So they say, okay, you can start your uh, TRs course. So they, I go in and I do this thing called an M7, which is basically Bodhi, and the supervisor are kind of helping me clear the words through. And I, the first thing I ever did in Scientology was read Keeping Scientology Working, which is a pretty heavy uh, uh, bulletin. Yeah, explain what that bulletin says. Well, it's that uh, basically is that Scientology, it's, uh, well, it's, it's a very interesting bulletin. At first, it's, it's, it's updated. So you're reading the updates. I think it was written in 1965, and it was updated in 70 and 75. And those updates are before you read the actual bulletin, and the updates are like L. Ron Hubbard just going bananas. This thing is true. It was true in 1965. It'll be true forever. If you just follow this, Scientology will never fail, and it will take over the universe, and will save all mankind, and we're the only hope for the world. So just if you apply this one policy, everything will be fine. Now, in the bulk of the fucking policy is stuff of, you know, it's, it's pretty heavy, you know, that if you're in Scientology an inch, you're in an ounce. I mean, uh, you're in for the rest of your, you know, this is the billion-year contract shit. This is the heavy Scientology. We are the only hope for mankind, and whether you get it or not, it's the truth, and we're not here to, to placate you. We're here to try and save the planet, and we're only, they are the only hope for mankind, and so this is no game. So that was the first thing I got. I said, okay, you know, we'll see. I couldn't say, you know, I believe that, but uh, 
it was an interesting, bold claim that made me say, okay, all the more. Is this shit really that 